Today we are talking about structural balance testing and uh, general testing uh, just to make sure that you are programming the right way. If you're not testing, you're guessing and we don't want to be doing that. We want to make sure that our training is done with deliberate intent and we know we have a clear goal to you know, solve a problem and make us stronger, flexible, more athletic and take us towards the skills that we want. We're also going to answer some uh, pretty cool questions from our online tribe and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit bit more about motivation all that and more coming up we are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance not just body image what's up everyone in case we haven't met my name is rad burmeister that's my brother yanni we're the co-founders of unity gym and the co-creators of the ums the unified movement system where we turn driven people into superhumans the reason we get such astonishing results with our members is that we've created a program that has a balance between strength and flexibility. We're going to talk about that a lot in today's show, but uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you want to know how we do that, you can also download one of the uh, flexibility, strength, or nutrition blueprints. And also, you want to join the Facebook group called UMS Movement Mastermind, which is where we are going live to right now. And... Um, Today we got a good question from one of our online coaching members, Lars Peterson. Uh, so he's a member of the UMS online coaching program. If you didn't know what that is, that is our mothership. That's the program that is all encompassing a perfect balance between strength and flexibility, uh, a road to calisthenics and uh, advanced weightlifting designed to take uh, people from beginner right through to uh, very advanced. And the way that the program works is we've split it into two distinct different phases. First, we have the foundations phase and then we have the progressions phase. The foundations phase is for anybody wanting to prepare their body for more rigorous work later on. And a lot of people need that. Even people that have been training for 10, 15 years, they need to go through a foundations phase because they never actually trained in a way that creates structural balance, balance between strength and flexibility, balance from left to right, and balance from agonist and antagonist in the joints. Yeah, that's right. And that's um, a, crit a really critical step. We used to enforce it uh we used to make everybody go through that and that was very much based on my years of following and, and training with charles poliquin the late charles poliquin he was very big on anatomical structural balance and doing a phase of that which was usually around nine weeks of training even for elite level athletes um usually everyone has structural imbalances particularly elite level athletes because they are training for specialization in a certain sport and you can uh, usually unlock a lot more potential in an individual when you balance their body. You get their joints functioning at the, 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 the best ratios. And uh, there is a couple of universal strength formulas that are used um, based on hundreds of years of SNC coaching data. Uh, we've adopted um, probably the, the uh, methods from about 10 of the world's best, arguably the world's best um, uh, data collectors over the years uh, to create our UMS structural balance blueprint. And that's what we use for our strength testing protocols. And um, it- Very successfully. Yeah, the other thing that it does is it, it, it um, I think it helps in um, harness um, intrinsic motivation because Unlike, um, you know, everyone's body is a little bit different. Everyone's shape's a little bit different. Everyone's starting point's different. Your injury history, your training history, things like that. So it's hard to compare yourself to other people if you're not, if you're not playing a sport, if you don't take the field and there's a winner and a loser every game. Uh, with training, you know, we tend to, um, you know, uh, compare ourselves to other people if we're training for aesthetics because we want to stand on stage and meet a certain criterion uh, based on the judging. Um, and that's uh, okay. But when it comes to performance, physical performance, your, your benchmark is yourself. Your benchmark is your own physical um, capabilities. Everyone's got strengths and everyone's got weaknesses. And what the anatomical structural balance blueprint does is it provides an input um, that is very much you versus you. You're striving for the best, very best version of yourself. And, uh, and that's what I really like about it because it re really harnesses that intrinsic motivation. Um, it's about leveling up and achieving your best self. And I, I, I love that. I love that. Coming from a bodybuilding background where, you know, it really played into my 
um, uh, muscle dysmorphia, my, my psychology around comparing myself to other people, which we all know is unhealthy. It's not healthy to compare yourself to other people. You, you don't know what their journey's been like. You don't know what they've done to get to where they are, uh, things like that. So you wanna make sure that you're um, comparing yourself to you, to your best version of yourself. And that's what the blueprint does, provides yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. So what we've got here, once people finish the foundations program, or some people don't even start in the foundations program, there, we have a, uh, some questions that we ask people to help them understand where they should start. And um, some people go straight into the progressions program, but the, there's a really big difference between the two. The foundations program is a set program. So everybody does phase one, two, and three, because Yanni and I have been doing this for almost two decades now, and we learned through years and years and years and years of training thousands of people that there is a better way to prepare people and it is the same for 95 percent of people yeah um you there is only so many ways that you can squat and there's only so many ways you can press and there's everybody needs to use dumbbells before barbells that have structural balance issues and so on and so forth yeah once you get to the progressions program so after the first three phases of the foundations well, hold, on, program, hold on let's take a step back quickly because let's talk about why that's important to understand the, 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 on the grassroots level, um, without going too much into the weeds, what we want to do is optimize range of motion. So we want to optimize every joint's range of motion. And we do that by uh, using dumbbells, first of all. You, like, uh, if we take a, the very, very most, the most basic example uh, of, a, of a press, okay? A dumbbell is going to be able to take the joint through its more natural range of motion because we can alter the grip Mm -hmm. to tailor the movement to the way the joint likes to operate properly. If we're restricted to a, um, a pronated grip on a barbell, there's only so much that the shoulder is going to go into, um, what's that? Horizontal uh, abduction. Horizontal abduction, that's right. Um, and so that's the first thing. The second thing is we know that if we use dumbbells over barbells, we're training unilaterally. So we're able to um, express force individually from one side to the other so that we're not um, uh, assisting with the strongest side. And everyone has a dominant side, depending on if you're left or right-handed. Very few people I've ever met are ambidextrous perfectly in strength as well. Um, and uh, so we want to balance um, symmetry, left to right side. And then the blueprint, uh, the, the, the foundations program also has a ratio of agonist antagonist strength. And that's what we want to balance too. So we have a very even keel uh, between pressing and pulling, between bending and extending, uh, between uh, uh, knee extension, knee flexion, things like that. And so really creating all of those three, um, uh, strengthening in all of those three areas is what it's all about going through that foundations program. And that's how and we're flexibility. able- And flexibility. And, and, and doing a one-to-one -one strength to flexibility yeah. ratio, doing the unilateral foundational stretches uh, or loaded stretches yeah. that we do um, that have achieved just phenomenal results in our in yeah. us and our tribe. And, that, and, and what we found after training people for almost 20 years is that there was a one size fits all that worked for that. Yep. You know, we just selected the best exercises that were going to maximize the joints range of motion under load, uh, couple that with the best opposing stretches and um, and work unilaterally throughout that nine week to 12 week phase. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, mm -hmm. it works incredibly well. Yep, sure does. So once that nine to it's actually nine to 18 weeks, Yanni, because uh, oh, some people right. do it up yeah. to six weeks per phase. Once that nine to 18 week foundations phase is finished, uh, people move on to the progressions phase. And the progressions is where we do strength uh, as well, structural balance testing. And the results of the structural balance testing tell us how to write a customized program for the individual. So now we start looking at working on prioritizing things that people need more work on. Um, and it's all come from those uh, from that Charles Poliquin influenced um, uh, testing process that Yanni um, spoke about just before. So what happens is what we've got here is and, and, and people get um, people get confused here when they do their first testing and, and rightly so, you know, this is what you this is what you have access to us for. We're here to guide you. It's not just a hey, figure it out for yourself. So people do their testing, they look at it and they go, oh, my God. 
what do I do with these results? And that's what we're here for today, uh, partly because Lars Peterson has finished his testing, he's given us, he's posted his results and he's asked for some help. So Richie, can you um, get that uh, image up there? Okay. And just let me know when it's up on the screen so that, okay, awesome. So uh, hopefully, because we've got a little bit of a delay, hopefully we can all see that image here. So this is what Lars's uh, testing results look like. And this is a really awesome um, Google Sheet that's been created by one of our members at the gym here, who's a bit of a whiz, where once you punch in, uh, we're not going to explain all of this because there's a hell of a lot going on here and that's for our inner, inner circle, inner tribe that are in the UMS online coaching group. But basically all of these lifts, we do the barbell bench press and the barbell back squat. They're the two lifts at the top that everything is based off. And those are the only ones where you figure out what your maximum 6RM is. And then everything else you can see is a percentage of those lifts. So then there's a, so once you've figured out what the maximum you can lift for six reps of the bench press and the back squat, then everything else should be a percentage of it. So. What we're looking at here with Lars, when I have a look at it, um, so the first thing we look at is the dumbbell external rotation from the knee. It looks like you've said your target weight was 8.4, so you actually went for 10 kilos. I would have gone for 7, uh, 7.5 if that was me, because 7.5 is closer to 8.4 than 10, but that's okay. And you got 7 on your A side, uh, that's pr most likely your strong side, and 5 on your B side, and that's no problem. So the target weight was 6, you only had a 2 rep range difference, that's considered an acceptable difference, so no, no issues there. Uh, 30 degree incline bench press, you got seven reps, that's fine. As long as we get between five to seven, it's not considered an imbalance. So the barbell front squat, there's the first imbalance there. You've got four reps, so that's under uh, the amount that we want to look for. Dumbbell trap three raise, uh, you got eight and seven. Um, the only thing I'd say here is, Lars, the first thing I'm going to say before I even continue, I guarantee you that if Yanni or me or Richard were watching you do this, some of these tests you would have failed. I, can, I, I shouldn't say I guarantee you. I would bet that some of the tests you would have failed if we were watching you. That happens to everyone. We see people's videos of them doing the test and they say, um, oh, look, I got five reps. What do you think? And I wouldn't have counted one of the reps. Um, the technique just wasn't clear, uh, wasn't correct. So the first thing I'm going to say is before I even go further with this, Next time you do this, please film yourself. Film yourself testing, at least for the first two or three testing weeks until so that we can say, okay, that was good, but you needed to get this much range or your elbow was bending or whatever it was. Um, it's really, really important because the numbers, as much as I'm going to tell you what these numbers mean and how you'll write your own program, the numbers are really irrelevant without us being able to check your technique. That's really, really important. And that's what this whole um, online coaching group is about. It's about us being able to coach you. So let's say everything was perfect though, and I'm, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll walk through this. So the front squat is the first thing you need to prioritize. Dumbbell trap three raises, there's no problem where there. The bent over row, you're stronger than you were in pressing. So that is, that's indicating that you have a slight imbalance where you're stronger with, with rowing than you are with pressing. It does happen with some people. I'd like to see your technique very though. Very, very, very rare. rare. I think you were probably fudging your technique a little bit there. Um, so the the split squat, there's no. Well, let's let no no no. I don't want to go down this path of uh, critiquing something we haven't seen. So don't, um, Lars, don't disregard anything Rad said about fudging form and technique because we cannot make that assumption without yeah. seeing your videos. So let's just make the assumption that everything was done perfectly. Okay, cool. Okay. So you've got a uh, so you've got an imbalance from uh, pushing to pulling where your pushing needs a little bit of work, and in all honesty. Um, in my experience, uh, like I wouldn't even prioritize pushing that much because it just gets so much work in the program anyway, right? Like yep. you just, you just, it'll take care, that imbalance will take what, care of itself. This is what the feedback we're getting here is. You, yep. choose, you, you, you build the program based on where you need the most amount yep, of work. That's right. So the split squats, no major imbalance from left to right. I mean, there's a two rep imbalance from your good side to your weak side in everything so far, a two or a one, but that's fine. Up to a two rep uh, difference is an acceptable imbalance. Uh, the flat dumbbell chest press, so it looks like you're a little bit stronger with your dumbbells there. Um, a, a rarity, that, but we do see it in some people, and usually it just comes from, an, uh, from a lack done, of... When you've done more dumbbell pressing. Yeah, that's right. Then yeah. You've got a really strong neurological pathway there, yep. which so is good. It's good. Yeah, that's great. Yep. So here's the first major imbalance is the seated barbell overhead press. And what I'm, what I'm looking at here is if we go down to day five, 
I am very interested that you only got two reps in the overhead press, but you got seven reps in the behind the head press. We almost never see that. Usually if people go poorly in the overhead press, they go extremely poorly in the behind the head press. So yeah, I'd be really interested to see your videos there, but we're going to, we're going to presume that it, all the technique was correct. So you definitely need to prioritize overhead pressing. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then the last one, the back racked barbell front step up. So you, de so you definitely have a imbalance here from, oh, sorry, the deadlift, uh, you, you've got, if we go back to day four, the deadlift, you got 11 reps. So that's a big imbalance from your squat. That's something that we see quite common, quite, it's quite common that people have a stronger deadlift than a squat. We're going to talk about that in a sec. And and then the, uh, so if we go down uh, the kneeling single arm row, no imbalances there, that's fine. Uh, the chin up looks good, the behind the head press looks good, and then the uh, back rack barbell front step up. So what we're seeing here is the major things that stand out is the, the overhead press and the, uh, the front step up uh, and the front squat. Okay, so the way that I would do your program, and then you've said there's a little thing over here where you've said, if we look in the comments, you've said, uh, I'm trying to follow the program, but I have to adjust some exercise to fit my equipment at home. That's totally normal. Also, I can't train all of these days. I want to run, ride bikes, swing kettlebells also. So what I would suggest is straight away, um, I'd love to see you just do four days a week where you drop the straight arm strength days and you just focus on the two lower body days and the two bent arm strength days. Hopefully you can do that. If you can't do four days, let us know. Um, and then what you're going to do is you will prioritize front squatting on your um, squat day. Um, because your deadlift was uh, so much stronger than the squat, if this was me, I would actually do front squats and hamstrings as the primary lifts on both the lower body days. And then I'd do deadlift as a supplementary only on one of those days. So I would do deadlifting and I'll see what Yanni's got to say about this as well. I do deadlifting as a supplementary on Friday. And then I would do the, the, the back rack barbell front step ups as a supplementary on Tuesday. So you're doing front squats Tuesday and Friday, and then you're doing supplementaries. You're doing the step ups on Tuesday and the deadlifts on Friday. What do you think about that Yanni? First and foremost, I'd like to say that Lars is an absolute weapon. Yeah. Um, to do a uh, six reps on a 32.5 kilogram um, thigh high parallel to thigh parallel to floor step up is no easy task. That's yeah. unreal. Yep. And also the trap, the dumbbell trap three raise. Uh, I have very rarely seen someone be able to hit those numbers on nine kilos. So well done, brother. You are yep. an absolute weapon. Assuming um, f uh, form, technique, and tempo was all. Uh, true to the protocol, you're 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 a beast. Well done. Yep. Um, uh, look, I I depending on how depending on what you um, want to do, you know, I have a different um, uh, ph philosophy than Rad. If your goal is to try and fit all of that in, and that's just the reality, you want to get all of your other other work in, then you just choose what you can do. If you can only do two days, then the things that stand out for me are the overhead pressing and the front squat. So you f you prioritize those two movements on those two days. One day you'll do overhead pressing, one day you'll do front squatting, you know. Of and course. And you always do opposing movement as well. Yeah, yeah that's so right. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you know, it comes down to what you can do um, with your schedule, with your training schedule, but you'll prioritize the worst. And this is what the test is there to do. You prioritize the areas that you need strength development the most. And over time, you'll be building a more balanced physique and a more balanced body and a more balanced body performs at a much higher level when it's tested and a uh, more balanced body injures itself um, uh, a lot less, you know. Um, in an ideal world, you know, we get our athletes for f five to six days a week uh, following our protocol, and then we can double up um, stimulus on uh, muscle groups, uh, meaning do two leg days, do two bent arm strength days, and do two straight arm scapular strength days. And of course, that's going to get you a better result in strength and flexibility. But if you've got other goals, like um, you've suggested here, uh, riding bikes, um, swinging kettlebells, things like that, then yeah, you've got to work it around the, how you're going to um, uh, get the workout done and still enjoy it. You know, we like to keep things super simple because simplicity tends to get the better result. Um, but um, for some people, it's not all about getting the best results. It's about still enjoying the process. Yeah, you yeah. know, my only thing that I would say about uh, that, where you say I want to run, ride bike and swing kettlebells, uh, and you've got a little laughy face after the swing kettlebells. 
I personally would not call swinging kettlebells as something that I would want to do. I would say like wanting to run and wanting to ride a bike, definitely. Those are activities that you say, I want to be able to go and do these. But kettlebells are a means to an end. Kettlebells are, uh, for me anyway, yeah. they, they don't have to be for everyone. I get that for some people, you, that, that might be your thing. You might really enjoy training with kettlebells and that might be what you're trying to say here. I think that's what he's trying to say, yeah. Because okay. there are people out there, uh, very strong people. I have some friends who are uh, world champions in, in, in kettlebell um, competition um, who are very strong people, you know, yeah. and kettlebells are, we use them here at the gym as a tool, just like a dumbbell. Uh, mm. But it's not like we do a kettlebell workout. Yeah, you know, it's just, we, a tool. It's it's just, just another we, tool. We yeah. have dumbbells, kettlebells and barbells, and that's what we use as, as, as stimulus. Yep. Um, yeah. And... Um, so yeah, I would you know I would potentially add a a, a, fr a front rack to ket um, double kettlebell front squat or something like that you know as a yeah. as an op opportunity to develop that um, that front squat you know. So Lars, just like to to wrap this up here, you can see. The first thing you need to do is figure out how many days a week you want to train. And then once you've figured out how many days a week you can commit to training, something that you know you're going to be able to do, not um, don't do something that you're going to fall short on. Don't say you're going to do something that you're not going to be able to commit to because it'll just let you, you'll let yourself down and you'll, it gives you that feeling of failure. You know, you want to say, you know, if you can only do two days a week or three days a week or whatever it is, then say that. And then we build your workout around that. And it's like Yanni said, you know, you just choose the things that you want to uh, focus on. And then we go through this process of retesting. And so you retest in uh, another six weeks and we see what the results are. And over time, over several testing periods, meaning that's a mesocycle, so a six week phase that, that finishes with a testing week, over several testing uh, mesocycles, you will see that these numbers even out and you start to if you if you program properly you the numbers will start to all add up to that five to seven rep range on everything and when you get to that beautiful spot then you can start looking at a couple of different things you can start looking at saying all right i just want to get as strong and flexible as i can but you don't need to prioritize any specific things so your your training becomes more general you know more just okay today's my bench press day today's my shoulder press day so on and so forth or you can start saying i want to start moving into some calisthenics training you know my body's ready for that um where i'm at this year because i was really going for the calisthenics last year and i did a slap tear in my uh right shoulder so where i'm at this year this entire year is about just becoming strong as and flexible as I possibly can. That is my number one goal, just superhuman strength, superhuman flexibility. I, I don't care about skills. I don't care about any of that, which is my reason for training. So that's a really big thing for me to do. But um, yeah, and that's just what you have to figure out. And then your programming becomes, um, yeah, specific to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now le let's, you can bring that um, graphic down now. Let, I wanna just, um uh, answer Kumaran's question here because this is a really good one and it's really important. I had a friend of mine in the gym yesterday uh, who's was the physio for the Giants AFL. That's Greater Western Sydney Giants. That's uh, for those of you in America. That's that's an it's a, a a tier one NFL team, a professional NFL team equivalent, but uh, for the Australian Football League. And um, uh, you know we were having a talk about what this means, this lockdown for. Uh, athletes and it's the same goes for you and me it's sa the same goes for all of us um, it's it's break it's breaking people's routine and a break in routine means that you have to adjust your training and um, there is going to be a an extremely high risk of injury coming out of this lockdown when people jump under barbells and, and dumbbells and kettlebells again if they haven't been able to continue that style of training if you're doing the daily workouts with us we're doing our absolute best to keep your body stimulated to the highest level as as much as humanly possible and that's why a lot of you will be finding those workouts really tough we are literally trying to maintain your conditioning so that when you go back to the gym because we're acutely aware that having that period away it's the same goes for a professional athlete you're going to be at very high risk of injury when if you try to return to what you were doing just before uh, before you left you know so which is what everyone will want to do so what Kumaran has asked here once this lockdown is over since I won't be able to get to Unity Gym he's been relocated from Sydney to Melbourne so he's going to need to find a new gym to train at would you recommend <clears throat> I do the foundations or jump back into a testing week and then progressions training uh, you could do either 
you know if you feel like your body if, if, you, imbalances have crept in and it's very difficult for us to create the perfect formula in these at home workouts because it's hard to replicate pulling as much as we can push it's hard there's very little that we like we can't do nordic hamstring curls and movements like that that are loading knee extension and knee flexion in the same way that we do when we're usually training so there are going to be um some imbalances uh, potentially uh, uh, developing in people's bodies. The longer we stay in lockdown, the more prevalent that will be. Um, there's probably it's probably a great opportunity for people to run through the foundations program again. You know, I yeah, think. definitely, it, it is a good opportunity. Knowing you, Kumaran, know having trained you for um, God, man, I think you trained with us for almost a year, didn't you? Let me know. Um, you got to you got to let me know how long you were here for before you left. Maybe it wasn't a year, but anyway, let me know. Um, I personally, if I was you, I wouldn't. I would do a testing phase. And what yeah, I really agree with what Yanni said. You can do it, uh, and there's a good reason to do it. And if I did it and I was at your level, Kumaran, someone who's been training for several months and really knows the UMS, I'd probably only do it for three to six weeks. I wouldn't do like a whole 18-week foundations course. Um, but knowing you, what I would do is I would still do a testing uh, I wouldn't do a testing week. What I would do is I would just do a general um, mesocycle of all of the basic lifts that we do. So vertical push, pull, horizontal push, pull, just the basic stuff, but at, like starting at like 60%, your maximum intensity and building up towards the end of it to about 90%. And then I would do a testing week. That's what I'd do if I was, you wouldn't yeah, do that? Well, I don't know. Look, I, I don't know. I mean, I, first of all, I wouldn't do a three week um, uh, foundations that's going to do absolutely nothing for you i would do the full three phases and maybe do three weeks for each phase so that'd be nine weeks in total mm. um but um the you know the reality is is that the, that the stabilizers in the shoulder and in the hip and things like that aren't gonna have been tested as yeah. much in the same way mm. as they have been uh previously doing you know um one and a half times body weight squats and things like that and, and heavy bench press and things like that so um, yeah, maybe do what yanni said do three do th uh three week phases so other, you get well, it done in nine there's weeks. another really nice thing about the uh, foundations program it's a done for you program yeah and so you can switch off you can go to the gym and just focus on banking the reps getting the volume your consistency rebuilding yeah. the habit yeah. of going to the gym all that sort of stuff without becoming overwhelmed with oh geez i've got to do testing and then i've got to punch all my data into the um uh, into the calculator and 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 then you know and kumaran's going to be for the very first time in a gym on his own he's not going to have you there looking over his shoulder you know so it might be nice for you kumaran to just do that um uh foundations program get the habit going again get used to your new gym environment wherever you are training in 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 melbourne and um and then you know reconnect with the progressions program after you've got that habit going again you know because one less moving part in the process is going to um yeah it's go it's going to make it easier for you to integrate into your new routine you know yeah for, yeah, for, for, our, sure. for our guys at unity gym they'll be coming back and we'll be doing a um yeah we'll probably be doing a phase where we get them just using barbells again we'll be doing a, a blanket phase and then after about four to six weeks we will do a testing week and we'll be really really on everyone to make sure that tempos are perfect you know they haven't picked up any shitty habits in their time off make sure that form and technique is perfect make sure that they're nailing you know those small remedial movements like the trap three rays like the external rotations they're really strict they're not swinging the weight they're not creating inertia they're not lifting with their egos because a lot of that creeps back in when you've been away from the gym for a while and um, yeah, everyone wants to get, kick start where they left off everyone wants to be able to jump straight back into where they left off even even if they've had three or six months away from the gym and you know that's that's how injuries occur you know yeah that's how injuries happen and one yeah. of the main reasons for injury in the gym acute injury is when you've had some time away whether it's for a vacation a work trip a freaking health pandemic lockdown uh and then you jump straight back into where you left off and you've got this data oh, okay so i was squatting 120 kilos before and you haven't squat any weight on a barbell and you try to jump back into that you may not have that level of conditioning anymore oh, you won't. and it's going to be hard for everybody it's going to be hard Man, for the ego you gotta just just take it easy work your way back in
Yeah. Um, so yeah, Kumran, that's a. I think that's a good plan for you. Do uh, three times three week phases of uh, of the foundations, and then you'll be ready to uh, test after that. So we've got three quick questions to get through here. Uh, we've got James Ryan has said, "Hi guys, I've been getting into the 18 minute stretching routine since January, and since early March, I have incorporated the mobility routines into my daily program. Well done. Now that we're in lockdown, I've added the strength." dumbbells ring so he's talking about the 18 minute strength routine the 24 minute dumbbell routine and the 24 minute rings routine these are all included in the flash sale that ends in about four or five hours if you're watching and yanni and i have talked about this we are never going to include those programs in a flash sale again this is your last chance to get them all um so jump on and grab that while you still can so he's saying now that we're in lockdown i've added the strength dumbbells rings and handstand routines and also the phase two of the daily programs to my suite of workouts oh dude i haven't yet started on these latter routines as i'm not sure if i should be attempting to incorporate them or progress through them i'm quite active and do like to do some sort of workout every day before lockdown i was working out regularly with weights at my local gym and originally got the flexibility routine as i wanted to improve my shoulder mobility which was quite poor due to several years of slouching over a desk of work since discovering the flexibility program and getting into the mobility workouts a whole new world of training has opened up before me and i'm loving it i usually do the mobility routines in the mornings followed by some weight training then later in the day i do the 18 minute flexibility routine any advice on how best to use these programs would be greatly appreciated so first thing i'd say is unless you have a serious amount of time on your hands and when i say time i don't just mean time to train i mean time to recover because if you did um if you did the phase two daily programs plus you did the strength dumbbells and rings routines in a day plus the stretching and mobility routines you you're going to need a serious recovery program for that um which means a lot of sleep a lot of supplementation a lot of really good nutrition and if you can do that then by all means do it um uh so you know the 18 minute stretching routine and the mobility routines arguably they are going to be recovery um you know they you can do do that at, a, at an intensity level that's going to be good for recovery so that's great so the phase two daily programs you, if you do them with me live or if you watch them later i would say that is like the core of your workout that's the you know that's the do this before anything else kind of a thing and then see if you've got the time to do anything else what do you think about that yanni he's talking about the eight, 18 minute strength routine he's and talking about all of them he... okay yeah the, yeah the 18 minute yeah. strength let me routine. just make it absolutely clear the 18 minute strength routine is it the 18 minute dumbbell routine and the 18 minute no, rings it's the, routine? the 18 minute strength routine is the one that we did no no, no i know yeah. what it is but it's what are the other ones called yeah. the 24 minute dumbbell routine and the 24 minute rings routine okay all three of those programs are designed as an absolute entry level yeah. program they're not designed to be anywhere near as difficult as our foundations program our ums online coaching progressions program or even the daily workouts that yeah. we're doing right now yeah. your we design those programs for people who aren't doing much exercise at the moment they are not a, a, a anyone who's doing this daily workout and getting through it fine is going to find any one of those three programs very easy yeah. very easy what i would recommend you do is and they they're fine they're great for this sort of situation you know if you've got rings then you can incorporate that and the good thing with rings and dumbbells is depending on how heavy you lift you're going to be able to make that workout harder so for, for the for the person who's getting through these daily workouts i would um i would say just keep doing the daily workouts and if you want to add some external load if you've got dumbbells at home or a kettlebell or something like that just add that to the workout you know but um if you're you know if you're uh wanting to mix it up a little bit and uh and do something a little bit different then yeah use um in integrate those other workouts the 18 minute strength routine is uh, in the same token that the 18 minute stretching routine is an entry level, level flexibility program, the 18 minute strength routine, routine is an entry level strength routine. We designed that for people who want to do a workout, um, a unique workout that's going to balance um, opposing muscle groups uh, that don't have access to a gym or gym equipment. Okay, so just just keep that in mind and. Um, 
and make sure that, uh, yeah, you're doing the right workout to your current level and what you've got available to yourself at home. Yep. Steve Jones saying, I thought those three programs were more advanced than foundations. Thanks for clarification and may want to uh, make that clear in introduction. No material. way. Those, those, those programs are designed um yeah we created those programs for people like we've got a we've got a big audience and with, there's some people that are really looking to level up their training and they just want to jump into something that's all encompassing and does everything and then you've got people that can barely get past the idea of even going to a gym you know and that's what we created those programs for to just help get people across the line but if you're in james's um, situation and you want to add those workouts after you've done your phase two um, uh, at home workout after you've done your 18 minute routine, then go for it, do it. It'll add a little bit of an extra kick. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a heads up and um, take this how you m may. Anything that has a time frame on it, like 18 minute, 24 minute, is not is going to be far inferior to a 90 minute or 60 minute workout which yeah. the uh, if you do the foundations program correctly or a progressions workout correctly you, with the warm up and so, some mobility you're doing a minimum of 60 minutes to 90 minutes of a workout yeah and you cannot match that amount of volume with a 24 minute rings routine or a 24 minute dumbbell routine but we have to be really clear here because it almost sounds like we're knocking those programs we're not we're just saying for you james like with what you're doing already those programs are a regression from what you're doing so if you want to add it to get a little bit more volume or a little bit then go for it and there's those people out there that that those workouts are going to be really really hard for them i mean yeah. there's people that are overweight that have never trained before and they would die doing the at-home workouts you know yeah. as if, if they tried to keep up with me and that would completely dishearten them and make them feel and that's one that's a really big problem in the fitness industry is that there's people you know in australia we've got like si over 60 percent of our population are overweight and uh, such a small percentage it's like less than five percent go to the gym regularly so there's so many people that need to go to the gym but when they go there they get disheartened because the workouts are too hard for them so that's what those workouts are for so i don't think that we're saying they're not good we're just trying to put them into perspective as, as to where they would fit into your day depending on what you're doing for you james it would be a supplementary to what yep. you're already doing yep. yep there's great questions come in here from um jada goodwin crosby on the live stream, uh, she said, what do you suggest for the weekends if we are following the home workouts with Rad? So there's a couple of different ways you can look at this, Jada. I'll give you my uh, suggestion first and Rad can give you his. First and foremost, the easiest thing to do is to repeat Wednesday's workout on Saturday. That's the straight arm scapular strength workout. And that's what a lot of us do here in the UMS. We do the straight arm scapular strength twice. Uh, second to that is that I would be doing the 18 minute strength, uh, sorry, 18 minute stretching routine over the weekends because doing some mobility on the days that you don't do your regular uh, workout is really important to maintain the flexibility that you're working on throughout the week. Um, and lastly, I'm a huge fan of doing something totally different. Uh, we do a, um, a little bit of high intensity intervals. We do stair runs and, um, and get outdoors and go for a run or go for a walk. But it depends on where you are in the world and the, and the severity of your current lockdown status. You know, if you're not allowed to go out and do exercise outdoors, then uh, get that 18 minute stretching routine done. How good it richard just pulled up jada's comment on the yeah. screen and you could see her face and everything yeah. how good is that there's yeah. <laughs> our new software going for you all right let's crack through these last two questions here uh lee thompson has said hello gents i have tweaked my left rotator cuff sharp pains when i lift overhead not doms uh it's acute so i have been icing it and resting i was doing the shoulder rehab and with good form as part of my warm-up is this mostly scap based or shall i carry on do you drop any sections for rotator cuff issues uh, thanks very much, Lee. First, um, first and foremost, don't ice it, brother. That's very, yeah. very old-fashioned advice. You want the inflammation. Yeah, you the, want inflammation the inflammation is a critical part of the healing process. So if you want it to heal, don't ice. Uh, if you want it to, um, if you want to just reduce the pain and numb it, but you don't care about it actually getting better, then keep icing it. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I would ha say is, uh, how do you know you tweaked your left rotator cuff? I know that that's what Phil would say. Uh, have you had it diagnosed um, or are you just guessing? And if you haven't had it diagnosed, then I would strongly suggest do an online physio session with Phil White. Um, I, I always would suggest that first it, when yep. you've had an injury. 
Injuries can be the kind of thing where if you misdiagnose them or if you give the bro diagnosis, you can really cause problems that are going to last for a very long time. And it's yeah. this older stitch in time, right? Now, if budget is a real issue and you and it is just straight up out of your budget, uh, I respect that. And my suggestion would be to allow the inflammation to reduce by um, just the natural process of, of uh, letting your body heal. But I would continue with the shoulder rehab program. You may just have to go back to phase one if you were on one of the other phases because that, it is designed for people that are right in the early phases. Of, but do that daily. Um, don't just do it as a warm up. That would become your workout. When I had my uh, rotator cuff when it was fresh, those shoulder rehab workouts, they were my entire upper body workout. That was yeah. it. And I did that with gusto, man. It wasn't like I was like having a chat to young like you yeah. couldn't talk to me man i was so focused on making sure that everything was going well and, and they really fixed me yeah it's very very rare um that you want to stop exercising altogether mm. that uh, yep. the, the new data is really really important I couldn't to get your head around here yeah there's a whole new it. strategy and i cannot remember uh what it is i know it's got there's two components to it the second one is love like the acronym is love i can't remember what the letters stand for uh but um you, this is another reason to connect with Phil because he is over the most current research and data on injury management. And um, even if you just reach out to him on Facey, uh, I don't know if he's on the live stream. Sometimes he is on these live streams. We're, we're working our ass off to get him back on the show, uh, but we just have to um, figure out a way of getting it in. We had some problems last time we tried. Um, peace and love. That's it. Grace Clements remembers. And I don't remember what those acronyms mean, <laughs> but... Um, the, yeah, it's a totally different strategy than the old rice strategy, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Um, it's We've got a lot of new research now on injury management and um, it's uh, it's really, really important that you get that right because it, it's, you know, you'll get a much better response from it. So my first step would be to hit Phil White up on the Facebook group, ask a question and, and tag him in it. He'll remind you what peace and love stands for because I, I can't for the life of me. We did a whole show on this uh, on our YouTube channel. So we did a whole series on it, uh, in fact. So you could go back and search our YouTube channel for that. Um, and yeah, get a proper diagnosis. Rad's absolutely right. So the last question is, uh, we're way over time here. The last question is from Firas Salman and he said, which this is a real simple one, which days should I do the phase two at home workouts and which days should I do the handstand masterclass workouts? So um, this is a real easy one and I'm gonna, I'm gonna presume that you're in lockdown and you've got all the time in the world. Uh, ideally, you would do the handstand masterclass workouts before the phase two workouts on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So they're all upper body days, and you would get your handstand uh, workout done first, and then you would move into the phase two workouts. If you don't have that option, if you can't train that much, or if that's overtraining for you, the second option would be drop the Wednesday workout, do the phase two on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then on Wednesday and Saturday, do the handstand masterclass workout. Um, can I and can I just add to what Rad said because it really depends. It, the answer to that question is completely dependent on your current state of physical preparedness and conditioning. And when I started doing handstand training every day, um, after a week or two, my neck and traps locked up to s like such a severe state, and we all experienced an injury, an overuse injury during that period yeah, of adaptation. Handstands, it, it, yeah. it was either in the wrists or in the neck and shoulders. And you know, we're, we're okay with that because we like to push ourselves to the absolute max we can get out, out of our bodies. And we're, we're, we're totally, we're very well programmed to understand that injuries are a part of that process. But for many other people, they get really knocked about when they injure themselves. So I would recommend starting out doing it only on Wednesday and Saturday. And then if you feel like you're adapting well to that, start doing the other option that rad suggested yeah absolutely um i just want to have a little look here yeah okay so in the handstand masterclass in phase one we've got monday tuesday thursday friday workouts and mon i'm pretty sure if i remember oh, this look at grace clements going off here she's just explained the uh the acronym for peace and love how good are you grace <laughs> so the um the that what Yanni said is so true and even though the program has four days in there it is 
you don't necessarily do all of the four days when you're doing the handstand um, masterclass. And we, as the phases progress, we go from four days to five days to six days. You really have to make sure that you are, you know, taking care of your body and not overdoing it. And we could do a whole show on that. But if any of you watch these shows regularly, you'll know that this is a drum that we beat all the time. Yeah. So load this management. Is load management. So just take it easy. And I'll tell you this, Ferris. I was by, there's no other move that I can now do that surprised me as to how long it took me to learn than the handstand. Nothing, everything. The, the muscle up came, you know, relatively quickly, pull-ups, double body weight squats, the splits, everything. I am blown away by how long it took me to do a handstand. I thought from the amount that we were doing it, the dedication that we had to it, I thought I would have got it within a year and I didn't. Yeah. It took me about four years to get. And I'm not a hand balancing expert. There's people out there that when you when you can see them doing a one minute handstand, you can say, how long did it take you? And they go, oh, about a year. Um, but they're hand balances. They specialized mm. in hand balancing, which means that all of their training was hand balancing. And that comes at a cost. Yeah. And that is a cost that we are not willing to pay. We do not want a specialist body. Uh, we want a generalist body. We want to be able to be strong. We want to lift weights. We want, um, a ba we want balance from pushing to pulling. Yeah. We want a good physique. We want to be fit, you know, yeah. and we want to be able to do handstands and calisthenics moves. So we accept that it takes us longer, a lot longer to learn calisthenics moves than people that specialize in it, but that's yeah. okay. You know, cause we don't have um, chicken legs. Yeah, that's right. well, you, know, you don't want to be able to be blown over by a strong wind, no. you know, and a lot of those guys, uh, even a lot of the calisthenics guys that are amazing at calisthenics, my goodness, you wouldn't want to have to, you wouldn't want to have to staunch up to someone, No, you know, they've got, they've got chicken legs, you're going to get knocked over by a slap. <laughs> anyway, look, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you uh, I hope you got something out of that. We had a lot of engagement there and a lot of people watching, which is great. Uh, and I can tell you right now, if uh, if you're interested in this stuff, you know, the, this testing that we went through, th this is one of the many things that makes the UMS online coaching program uh, unique and superior to any other online coaching that we've seen. It is a phenomenal program that Yanni and Richard and I have poured our hearts and souls into. And you've got, um, you know, a combined total of about 45 years of industry experience that have gone into this, um, plus lifetimes of our own training experience. And we are Passionate is like, down, I'm, I'm trying to put my hand down near the ground here that you can't see it, but passionate is down here for where we are. We are obsessed with this stuff and we want every one of our members to get phenomenal results. And so that's why we put this amount of care into when somebody asks us some questions that are in our online coaching group. So if you want to step into that inner circle, you can have a, uh, a free trial. Um, you just need to uh, request it. I'll give you a, a link where you can join up for uh, for 30 days for free. After that, it's only 49 US dollars a month and you can cancel whenever you want. It is a really amazing program. I want to give a quick shout out to everyone who's listening on the podcast after this. If you want to know where you can go to be included in these questions and get involved in these Q and A's, you got to first of all join our, the first step would be to join our UMS Movement Mastermind private Facebook group. And from there, as what Rad said, you'll get opportunities like we do for those guys to give you a free month trial of the online coaching. We always answer our online coaching and Unity Gym Tribe questions first. We prioritize what's coming through there. And if we ever see a question that we see uh, value in everyone hearing the answer to, we'll usually bring that answer out onto the UMS Movement Mastermind private Facebook group. Big shout out to everyone watching on you, uh, YouTube. Um, and uh, if you haven't already joined that group, the private um, Facebook group, UMS Movement Mastermind, there's a link on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you can get involved in these live um, okay, discussions. One last thing to do before we go, Richie, can you grab that copy of Think and Grow Rich? It's the black book with the pink bit in the middle right in front of you. That's it. We oh, had, we're updating the book recommendation. Well, we're, we're not. Yeah, when we are because one of our, I can't remember who it was, but we've got to get rid of this one now. And if you haven't read that yet, that is number one on your list. Okay. For our UMS morning ritual. But we are getting our first members saying, finish the book. Unbelievable. Changed my life. What's next? 
That's what's next. Yanni and I have decided this is the second book in our book club here that we want you to read. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, is yep. it? Yep. It's not Napoleon. Very, Bonifat. very famous book. Yeah. Very famous book. Yeah. There's over, a lot. Over 30 it's or been, 40 there's, million There's been a new version worldwide. written recently, published recently, but this is the like Bible of personal development. It was written a long time ago after um, he was given access to the most successful people in the world. He, I think the book is based on the 100 most successful people in the world or the 50 most yeah, successful people Yeah, the American government the commissioned him to speak to the most, the, 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 the most financially successful people in the world and try to find common traits. Yeah. And uh, back in a time well before the digital era, he went around and physically went there and monitored these people and interviewed them and found that there were common traits between yeah. the most successful people and he wrote that book and it is the book that so many of the gurus of nowadays um talk about that it was that was the, the book that opened their eyes yeah, to right. the, the path that they're now on you know I, I don't know that tony robbins is one of them but i'm talking people like tony robbins yeah. there's definitely a few people that I, um that i've read yeah i see saying here this. classic book read it 20 years ago i've read this book several times and i'm going to read it again now with the tribe i'm finishing uh, Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday, which I think is a I might read it again as well. Book. I haven't read it for five or yeah. maybe even longer than that years, but uh, I think I'm it's, due for it's a It's such a good book. Um, guys, uh, Andrew Cross, know, it's Andrew Knoll who asked. He's saying thanks for remembering, Rad. Um, you, oh, is it? Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 What were you going to say? Oh, you want to know what, uh, something that uh, a take home for me from that book, which was so powerful to me? He talks about how most men don't achieve real success until their early 40s. And we are fortunate enough here to train some of the most successful business people in the country, yeah. e even in the world. And when I said that to them, they all looked up and went, yeah, I didn't actually achieve my success until I was in my early 40s. Yeah. And he talks about what it is, is it's a time in a man's life when he learns to channel his sex energy into something more productive. Sexual transmutation. Sexual trans it's yeah. It's chapter it's, 13. It's um, guys, if you, um, it, it, the, for all of the women, because I know we have a huge female population on this channel and on this show and in this group, and we love you all, please be aware that when you read this book, it was written in a time, a very long time ago when, uh, when and, 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 and women have a little bit of a problem with that when they read it. It's very much directed at men because back then, um, it's, it's back in the 1950s when w women were at home. It wasn't before that? It might have been before I think that. it was even before First that. First published. Uh, it's been rewritten recently by a man or a woman i can't remember look in the same way that some people have got issues with this being a military book it, you know it um yeah i didn't even notice that when i was reading it but i guess i'm a man so um that didn't stand it, out to it me. definitely is a very uh, uh design and patent act 1988 but, but, but uh, let's it's um let that you know look look deeper for the lessons first? guys does anyone lessons? know when it was first published for god's sake um, gotta be here somewhere I bet I can find it quicker than you can on Google. When was the, yeah, Google it, Google it. 1937. The original material in this book is a reproduction oh, of the complete 1937, 1937 edition of Thinking Grow Rich. I got it 10 there seconds you go. later. 1937, it was so originally definitely published. So definitely a time it, where it was a little bit of a... A man's world. world, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but get over that because there's still some great lessons in there. And there's still, there's a new book called Still Think and Grow Rich. Um, which, what? <laughs> I was going to make some really inappropriate jokes there. Don't do it. Don't to... do it. Now, for all of you who were waiting for all of my research, I've been very busy um, collecting data and research on the supplements that we mentioned yesterday, vitamin D and vitamin C. We will cover that on tomorrow's show. Rad hijacked me today and decided to completely change the script in the last I minute. didn't hijack you. What I did was I stayed committed to our UMS online coaching people, yeah. which I've always said we will answer your questions first. First, and we had some good questions so yeah, fair that's enough. one that's, of the that's, that's one of the perks of being in the ums online coaching program you get served first yeah that's very true if we ever do get important questions that come through there we make a show out of it so mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that those guys are getting a lot of value so um we'll try and cover this stuff tomorrow and if um ums online coaching or gym tribe members ask more good questions it'll get pushed till thursday <laughs> <laughs>
See you later, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Uh, I'm pumped for a good day today. I hope you all are. Um, it feels good to not be in deload week. I'm going to go out and lift some weights now. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked it, consider subscribing to our channel and make sure you click the notification bell so you know when our weekly videos are uploaded. Now, the best thing for you to do if you want to stay connected with us and get free online coaching is to join our private Facebook group. It's called the UMS Movement Mastermind. And we go live daily where we answer our members' questions. It's very interactive because you can post questions while we're live and we interact with you on the show. You can also upload videos or pictures of yourself with any movements, any stretches, strength training movements, calisthenics, weightlifting, anything that you're struggling with, and we'll critique you, give you feedback, let you know how you can get better. It's a really valuable resource. It allows a lot of communication with us and also our senior tribe members. You'll get answers very, very quickly, and it's absolutely free. So jump on Facebook, search for UMS Movement Mastermind, and join now. Until next time, have a great day.